What's going on, guys, and welcome back. It is finally time. Today, we're going to be talking about my favorite and probably best deck, Rocks and Hawks. This is by far the most dependable, consistent powerhouse of a deck that I've leaned on for a quick climb to infinite the last few seasons. This is my tournament deck, my reliable ladder climber, the hours upon hours that I've spent playing this deck. So today, I'm going to break down Rocks and Hawks. Everything that I've learned while playtesting and perfecting the deck, from the little tips that make it work, to strategies, to win conditions, everything to get you ladder ready. Now, here's my version of the deck, but we have a lot to break down with the cards, combos, and win conditions because there are a lot, and that's part of what makes the deck so good. So with that, let's go ahead and break down the cards in the deck and the purpose that they serve, as well as the win conditions. Now, first up for the one cost, we have Korg, who is a two-power card that is also going to give two power to our Darkhawk and hopefully Mystique. And at the same time, he can disrupt our opponent's card draw, and he's pretty much great to play on any turn because of the Darkhawk and the card draw synergy. Now, as for the other one cost, Quinjet is going to be great for discounts on energy for our Moon Girl copied cards, as well as Agent Coulson. On top of Rocking White Queen in the deck, the energy is going to make up for itself. Things like Dr. Doom on turn five is possible because of Quinjet. And once you add in all of the bonuses with our next card, it gets kind of out of control. Now, as for our two cost drop, Zabu, he's pretty much essential and his power is enormous in this deck. First of all, you're going to be discounting Shang-Chi, Darkhawk, Rockslide, Moon Girl, Agent Coulson's cards. And then on top of that, you combine that with Quinjet's energy reduction, and you can start to have some really silly power plays on turn five and six. Super clutch and probably my favorite card that brings the whole deck together. Now, as far as our first three cost card, Mystique is one of the other ways to get massive power in the deck. You can copy both Darkhawk and you can copy Devil Dinosaur. Uh, but the best part is Agent Coulson also spits out some ongoing cards to copy as well. If you manage to Moon Girl her and you do have Quinjet, she's only two energy, which is ridiculous. And this is how you can flood on Darkhawks and Mystiques and Devil Dinos on the board in the late game. Now, those of you that watch the channel know our next three cost card. Agent Coulson is probably one of my favorite cards in the game. And I think you need to start getting used to him right now before Conquest comes out. He's elite S tier in battle mode, and he's great in this deck because he always keeps our opponent on their feet. Our opponent never knows which cards we got, and they're usually discounted on top of that. Agent Coulson can spit out some really nutty combinations that a lot of the times you'll use instead of your other win conditions. Agent Coulson also is going to provide a late power boost to our Devil Dinosaur, giving us one of our win conditions. Now, lastly, for the three cost, we have Cosmo, and he is obviously here to do a couple of things. He can protect our ongoing cards like Devil Dinosaur and Darkhawk, but at the same time, he's obviously a huge tech counter card to the majority of the great decks out there. Uh, Cosmo is replaceable. I would say things like Rogue or other tech cards might be a good spot to switch him out with. Uh, you could go with like a Sentinel as well, but I find Cosmo serving so many purposes in this deck, which is why I love him. And again, his counter potential is through the roof. Now, of course, in this meta and probably most future metas, Shang-Chi is going to be uh, just a staple in this deck. First of all, you can discount him with Zabu, double discount him with the Moon Girl, with Quinjet and Zabu together. And he just solves a lot of problems. He's one of the primary win conditions playing him and Darkhawk on the last turn of the game is just insane in what you can do to flip the board state love shang chi you know if the meta does die down with overall huge power cards maybe shang will come out of the deck but for now he's just irreplaceable now next is moon girl and i see people not include them in their rocks and hawks type builds and it makes no sense moon girl has too much going for her with just all the synergy you have zabu discounting her you have quinjet to go and discount the cards that she copies you have She-Hulk, you have Devil Dinosaur, Mystique, Darkhawk, Rockslide. There is not a bad card to copy with Moon Girl. She truly gives the deck that extra power. And on top of all this, your opponent doesn't know which cards you copied, right? So if you skip turn five, uh, they don't know that you might have two She-Hulks to drop down. So really great at discounting six cost cards to five cost, allowing you to play two of them. There's a lot of unique things you can do, and she truly makes every game different with combination of Agent Coulson. Now let's move on to Darkhawk, obviously the main premier card of the deck, the mayor of value town. This guy just pumps out so much power exactly when you need it. If you need power early turns to win things like Asgard, you have Darkhawk. If you're playing with terrible locations or maybe you're up against a Thanos deck, no problem. Darkhawk is definitely going to win those games. Just an absolute stud of a four cost card. But I will say if you do not get Rockslide or Korg out there at all, his power is not all that great, right? So you probably want to switch to Agent Coulson's cards or Devil Dinosaur. But keep in mind, you can get him down to like two costs. And at that point, 
A 2-6, a 2-8 isn't that bad. Now, Rock Slide is our last four-cost card. We have four in the deck, all of which that can be discounted by Zabu. And Rock Slide is pretty easy to understand. I don't love playing him before Darkhawk because you typically want to surprise them with the power at the end. Uh, but if you're able to clone him with Moon Girl, you can seriously get your Darkhawks up to just insane power on the last turn of the game, which is great because then your opponent can't Shang-Chi it. And overall, just a very strong card with a four and six power attached. Now, last on Rock Slide, if you do have Mystique and Darkhawk in separate lanes, I typically like to play Rock Slide in the third lane if it is able to contest in power because you are adding to all three lanes at the same time and your opponent typically is not ready for that. All right, so we have one five cost card in the deck and it is Devil Dinosaur. Now, he's a bit tricky in this deck because you don't have a lot of cards that feed this guy up. You mainly have two, but the two that you have is definitely going to give him plenty of power depending on when you play them. Both Moon Girl and Agent Coulson have enough card feed to really get the power spike on Devil Dinosaur. And typically, you want to try to play him on turn 5, especially if you have Mystique in hand. Now, a lot of people assume when you play Devil Dinosaur down that it's going to go downward in power. But if you do play something like Agent Coulson or Moon Girl on the last turn of the game, especially Moon Girl, guys, because she's discounted with Zabu, you're going to spike the power right back up, and that really throws people off. It's Devil Dinosaur. He's one of the best cards in the game, and you combine that with the Mayor of Value Town in Darkhawk, and you can see why this deck is cooking. Now, finally, we end on She-Hulk, and obviously this can be multiple six-cost drops, right? You can have Doctor Doom here, but let's focus on the build with She-Hulk. Now, clearly, she's going to synergize with a lot of the other things in the deck, mainly if she's on the more left side of your deck when you have the match going. Uh, this is the Moon Girl card, and once you combine all the other energy discounts, naturally, She-Hulk is also going to be very cheap to play. In combination with Darkhawk, Devil Dinosaur, Agent Coulson cards, you can play She-Hulk for virtually nothing. She-Hulk can shine in pretty much any deck, but within this deck in particular, you can just get some crazy things to work out. Uh, let's say you skip turn 5 and you're able to copy Shang-Chi and She-Hulk. Well, that means you can play both of the Shang-Chis and both of the She-Hulks because one is zero cost, one is one cost, and you have a Shang-Chi at three cost and two cost as well. Overall, the power potential is just out of control, which is why I choose her over other cards in my deck. All right, so those are the core cards of the deck, right? The ones that I like to play with myself. But if you're missing a card or you want to see the different variations of cards that work, uh, let's jump into replacement options. First of all, if you don't have Agent Coulson, he is somewhat the heartbeat of the deck and making each game different, but you can go ahead and do Maria Hill or Sentinel. They both also coincide and work with Devil Dinosaur and Quinjet, so you have that going for you. Now, the next pair, Cosmo, is also replaceable with, let's say, White Queen, who really, White Queen is great to go with any card in the deck, so if you want to replace one of the options, uh, White Queen can work as she synergizes with Zabu, Quinjet, and Devil Dinosaur. Or you can choose to go with another option like Rogue if you want to replace the tech card, but I definitely prefer White Queen here. And then lastly, if you don't have She-Hulk, it is going to change the way the deck works. Uh, but there's a lot of six cost drops that you can slot here. Doctor Doom and Magneto to name a couple. Uh, but at the same time, you can also throw in something like Arrow, even after her nerf is still a great card to plug into this deck. All right, guys, let's kick off the turn by turn breakdown for Rocks and Hawks. Now, turn one is pretty easy. You do want to evaluate your hand and start to get an early recognition of what your win conditions could be. But a general rule is going to be Korg before just about everything else to disrupt your opponent's card draw. Essentially, it's pretty easy, guys. You can play Korg on turns one through three and sometimes on turn six for that last minute surprise. Uh, but if you do have a hand that consists of, let's say, Zabu and Agent Coulson, uh, then maybe Quinjet would be the better play here. Either or, Korg or Quinjet, both solid plays. Now, on turn two, it is usually Zabu over everything else. This is where you also want to look at your hands, but you can either play Zabu or you can play both Korg and Quinjet or the one that you didn't play on turn one. Now, turn three is more important for this deck than just about any other deck because you have the option to play four cost cards starting right now. It is imperative at this point you try to recognize your win conditions so you can play the right cards moving forward. Now, you can play a four cost card early. Uh, sometimes I like this to be Moon Girl if my cards are organized in the right hands. Let's say having something like She-Hulk, Darkhawk, Mystique, or Shang-Chi from left to right is usually a good indication to play Moon Girl. Now, I don't love playing Darkhawk or Rock Slide here. It kind of gives away what we're doing, and then you're going to have to Mystique to get that value. So I try to avoid those ones. 
typically, I like to play Agent Coulson on turn three. He's going to give you a nice tempo play. And if you happen to have Zabu and Quinjet on the board, you can have a huge discount to Agent Coulson's four cost card. And the five cost card will also be discounted as well, giving you a nice play option from turn four onward. However, as a quick disclaimer, if you have Devil Dinosaur on five and you want to finish with the Mystique Agent Coulson play, uh, then you don't want to play him right now. Now, if you haven't already, guys, this is the turn, probably the last one, to play Zabu, Quinjet, and even Korg. If you don't play Korg now, I like to play him around turn six for the surprise. And lastly, if you have nothing else you can play, you can always put Cosmo down to protect your Devil Dinosaur or your Darkhawk lanes later on, or you can try to counter something they're doing as early as turn three. Now, on turn four, again, we can do just about everything we talked about on the last turn. By now, you definitely need to know what is going to be your winning combination so you can play them in the right order. Uh, Moon Girl is usually the priority that I would play here. This is kind of your last opportunity to do so. Again, if you have She-Hulk, maybe Mystique, Darkhawk from left to right, now would be the time to play her. Now, if you don't have Moon Girl, you can also play the Agent Coulson cards that you got from last turn. Uh, sometimes, if you got a five-cost card discounted by Quinjet, you can do something like Sarah on this turn. Very good play. Or you can go and do White Queen to get some intel on your opponent. Now, last couple of notes here. Number one, don't play Shang-Chi. You don't want to play him until around turn five at the earliest. And if you want to get extra greedy, you can definitely start playing the Dark Hawk here and getting ready to go and play a Mystique on turn five so that you can also do a huge turn six. It depends how much cost and energy you're working with. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you can get a ridiculous amount of Dark Hawk and clones on the board. All right, moving on. We have turn five, guys, and this is where everything starts to come together, right? If you play Darkhawk last turn, you are going to be playing Mystique. If you have Devil Dinosaur, this could be a great time to play him. Or if you want to do one of those Coulson cards and they have a larger impact, again, these would be the cards to play. Now, if you successfully got your Moon Girl off on either turn three or turn four, there's a lot that you can do on this turn. If you have double She-Hulks, you can go ahead and skip this turn altogether for a massive play on turn six. You can play Darkhawk and your discounted Darkhawk here. You can play Darkhawk and a discounted Mystique. Whatever you copied, it's going to be a little bit different each time. Now, remember, this deck is going to work great with the last minute turn six surprise, right? So if you have Devil Dinosaur, play it down now. If you have Mystique and Agent Coulson, if you have both Darkhawk and Mystique, awesome but make sure you have rock slide and or cork to finish off strong for a quick power finish now let's say you are playing the dr doom version of the deck and you were able to moon girl that with quinjet well you can play dr doom on turn five remember every single game is gonna be a little bit different because of colson and moon girl and the cards that she copies now lastly we finish off with turn six this is where you're going to complement whatever you did on turn five that we've talked about tons of times with the win conditions but most reliably, I just love playing Darkhawk on this turn, followed by Shang-Chi on their best card. Usually, that's the most simple and straightforward path to victory. Uh, but if you don't have that, again, you can go ahead and Mystique, one of the ongoing cards that you did, and then just play the energy that you have in hand. Most of the time, if you're not playing the Hawk and Shang-Chi, you're going to be looking to play Mystique plus one of the other cards to benefit what you have on the board already. Whether that's Agent Coulson, Korg, Rock Slide, whatever it is to boost up your numbers. Now, lastly, if you skip turn five or you have multiple She Hulks in hand, uh, this is where things can get crazy. You can play multiple She Hulks plus Dark Hawk. You can do the multiple She Hulks in Shang Chi or a five cost card, whatever gets you the win. Remember, there's a lot of little things that you can do that give you the advantage. A, you want to separate your ongoing cards, don't put them all into one lane. If you have priority, try to Cosmo counter them or Cosmo your big cards to protect them. And then lastly, if you played White Queen, remember you have the intel. You know what they're trying to do. So just do the play that's guaranteed to beat whatever that might be. So let's mix all this together, guys. And before we go into the matches, we're going to go and look at the decks. Now, this is the Rocks and Hawks deck. This is the main one that I play personally on the ladder. But again, we've already talked about replaceable options. And so that last spot, feel free to throw in White Queen, Magneto, or Dr. Doom. And by now, you guys know everything you need to know on how to operate this beast. Now, my friend Binks did come up with a Dark Dino deck as well, and it does have Maria Hill and a couple of other options that's also doing really well on the ladder. So also really good and an easy way to pump up your devil with the Sentinels in hand. All right, so we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. I'll be commentating a match that has already been played, and I want to try this method uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, the quality is way better, uh, but much more importantly, I can pause, rewind, zoom in, and focus on things that are 
uh, sometimes happening really quick when I do my example matches. Uh, we'll definitely sprinkle this into my long form content, but I thought I would go ahead and test it out with my favorite deck uh, because I already know how to play it really well. So the match begins and you can see I have a pretty good opening hand in Korg, Quinjet, Mystique, and Moon Girl. And we talked about this before. If you have both one cost, what do you do, right? Uh, right away, I can tell you we're going to be really limited on space with Sanctum being one of the locations. And immediately, I need to kind of figure out if my opponent is playing a Doomwave deck or something that can access that location. Now, looking here, Korg is definitely the play because, well, obviously, we want to get the rock into their deck as quickly as possible. Even though I do have, let's say, Moon Girl, uh, Quinjet will probably make its way on the board as well. All right, so we move on to turn two. We draw Darkhawk and Wakanda is the next location. Uh, which is great because we can protect our big ongoing cards, but obviously our opponent can as well. Uh, now, clearly the play here is just to play Quinjet. Uh, but again, I am getting pretty limited on space. I didn't want to play Quinjet in the unknown location because uh, let's say that was space thrown. Uh, and then I lose, right? So even though I'm clogging space up early, I go in and put him with Korg and Wakanda. All right, now we fast forward to turn three. My opponent played the Time Stone. So they're working with four energy and we pulled Devil Dinosaur the last location being Hell's Kitchen. So there's a lot to process here. And ultimately, guys, I'm going to decide to play Mystique to copy Quinjet, which is uh, kind of silly, but you'll see why in a second. If you look at our hand, you guys can see that obviously Moon Girl is going to copy Darkhawk and Devil Dinosaur. So if we do play Mystique, that means we would get a double discount on all of those cards, making it very easy to play big power. And I know because of Sanctum, we have to do one of two things. Win both locations if he does have a way to get to Sanctum. Or we have to just outpower him in one location, which I thought I could do pretty easily with the cards we have. Now, also, as a side note, he did play the Time Stone. It's turn three. Nothing I really have to worry about here. If he played that on turn four, that's when I'm looking out for Leech and Sandman. But uh, really, there's not a four cost drop that I'm afraid of. Now, at this point, we're going into turn four and I draw Shang-Chi. And with that, I kind of have everything I need to know then I'm going to win this game, right? We have cards that we can go ahead and play in the middle for big power. And then on the right side, I can simply just play Shang-Chi. He's getting low on board space and things are looking pretty good from here. So obviously for me, the play is pretty simple. We're going to play Moon Girl onto Hell's Kitchen and then just wait and see what he has. And at this point, we're going to have huge discounts to Shang-Chi, Devil Dinosaur, and Darkhawk. Friendly neighborhood spider -Man. All right, so this there's a lot happening on this turn, and I actually love this. Uh, so he played a Spider-Man on turn four. Really weird play to begin with. Probably would have held on to that for turn five. And he changed it to, well, Monster Island with the Reality Stone, which often reality is disappointing. And uh, he filled up his lane early. Uh, I should have snapped going into this turn with what I had available, but now it's clearly obvious that I should snap at this point. And uh, I am thinking at this point through Spider-Man, like what other cards he could have, because that's a little bit of a weird card in a Thanos deck, uh, but he's probably playing a control type build. So at this point, it's a pretty easy decision. That side is going to be webbed off. And so the middle is going to be some big power. And then we can simply play Shang-Chi on the right side to kind of finish the game. So it's at this point, I decide to snap. We play our Devil Dinosaur and out comes on his side an Iron Man, which definitely makes things interesting. And it's going to be a bit tougher to win that middle location. Uh, but if you look at the cards that I have and the fact that I'm playing a Thanos deck, I know my Dark Hawk is going to have extreme value. Uh, so for me, all I really needed to do here was play Dark Hawk middle and play Shang-Chi right side. And that is most likely going to net us a win. I'm running through like all the cards that he could play in the middle on top of Iron Man. And I'm not that scared. Like if it's a Doctor Doom to go into Sanctum, uh, not a big deal. We can beat that with our power. Uh, you know, if it's Magneto, he can double that to 24. He already has two, so that's 26, but I still beat that power. So I felt really good. I felt like there was really nothing that he could do to win. And then we didn't have to do too much on the right side. Uh, a simple Shang-Chi was good enough for me. And to my surprise, an Onslaught went out here, which is pretty crazy. Uh, <laughs> definitely wasn't expecting that. And that's a lot of power all at once. Uh, but of course, that only beats me by one... Uh, power point in the middle. I'm winning by 10 power points. So very easy win here overall. And uh, somewhat we telegraphed what he was doing. Uh, he kind of hurt himself. And I did think I made a couple of things I probably could have done better. 
Uh, but as you can see, this game was wild. We started out with a Mystique cloning Quinjet, which seems terrible, but if you do it right, it's insane what you can pump out. So the battle is going to begin, and we have a really strong opening hand. You know, this is definitely worst case scenario if you don't get things like Core, Quinjet, or Zabu. However, you don't have to have them to get the deck to kind of get rolling uh, because you do so much on turn six. Uh, and our second location is going to be Wakanda Embassy, uh, one that I think is going to be very beneficial to what we're trying to do with our deck. So right away, Devil Dinosaur is going to be through the roof. Darkhawk gets a very nice power boost as well. Uh, but we have Moon Girl to get more copies of these powered up cards, which is why I went ahead and snapped right off the bat. Now, looking at the locations, you never know what X Mansion might have. So I did elect to play in the middle with Zabu. And at this point, I'm feeling pretty strong about everything from Zabu being out there to discount as well as having Moon Girl for the clones. Now, going into turn three, this is a tough one, right? I got Agent Coulson, and naturally, you want to play Agent Coulson uh, pretty much right away, and we have our Zabu out already. Uh, but because of that, we also have our boosted up Moon Girl, and looking at the hand I had, I can get double Shung Chi's, double Devil Dinos. This was definitely the time to play Moon Girl over Agent Coulson. Uh, I don't know if there is a wrong play here, but this is the one that I felt like was much better. And I started filling up the lane with Lizard on it so that I knew that you know, I wanted to put four cars on that lane to go and lower that lizard's amount. Now, he plays Cosmo in the middle. This is fantastic for us as we're definitely going to go ahead and play our ongoing cards safely here. And with X Mansion, he got an Iron Heart to boost up his lizard and Cosmo. And I got an Odin, which is uh, virtually useless outside of obviously a ton of power. So now you can look at my cards and just see we have a lot going on. A ton of boosted power and pretty much the keys we need to win the game. So I decide here, I'm going to go ahead and play my Darkhawk in the middle location. I know he can't do anything with a Cosmo there. I look at the size of uh, his deck and see how many uh, power points we're going to get for our Darkhawk. And for this exact reason, I did not want to play on the right side with Titania uh, because I didn't want to fill up my... Uh, he was trying to flood my side, right? So Titania goes to his side. Lizard is at 9. We have Cosmo at 7. And it is turn 5 in which uh, I thought it was somewhat obvious here. We're going to play Devil Dinosaur in the middle. We're going to double down on our middle location. We have Odin for the left side. And on the right side, I already know that I'm going to use my Shang-Chi to kill that lizard. So he plays a Red Skull, as you guys can see. And uh, at this point, uh, our middle lane is one. We know that, and there's no way that he can get rid of that. Uh, so it's a, it's a pretty obvious play, uh, what we do here. We have two Shang-Chi's. Both of them are three power. Uh, I was looking at maybe Devil Dinosaur and just outpowering him getting the titania on my side uh, and maybe even just doing quinjet so that i don't risk any funny business to go ahead and cancel out the lizard uh, but looking further into it i think it's kind of obvious we just kill both sides of the cards we're already winning the middle location unless he perfectly commits to everything which uh, is seemingly impossible uh, this win was going to be ours so this one was quite easy once you see this last turn play out so he's playing captain marvel which uh, definitely is not a bad play right uh, to cover his bases uh, but we kill the lizard, we go up by one, we take the Titania, and we kill the Red Skull, which is a perfect photo finish. And uh, there's not a lot he could do, right? Not a lot he can do. Uh, the Captain Marvel is just going to fly up, fly back down, and uh, another four cube win here. All right, so last game for you guys here. We have ourselves Vibranium Mines as the opening location. And our hand is Darkhawk, Devil Dinosaur, Quinjet, and Agent Coulson. Now, this is one of my favorite opening hands because we have Devil Dinosaur and Coulson. We also have Quinjet to go and discount those cards. And then Darkhawk is there, but, and, you know, it's Darkhawk. And we have so many cards that benefit that one as well. Uh, but especially Vibranium Mines is an instant snap Darkhawk location because if he plays any cards into that location, my Darkhawk power goes through the roof. So knowing this, I'm about to snap and my opponent snaps and we're already going for four cubes right off the bat and honestly i'm not stressing i feel pretty good about this uh, so we play quinjet in the middle um i don't want to play in a vibranium mines yet and ruin my card draw i would rather risk the location in the middle uh and quinjet does give it away what i'm playing but at the same time it could be a couple of things so daily bugle comes out it's pretty brutal because well uh, all my cards i have in my hand are really good uh, but we did get magneto and that is also discounted by our Quinjet, so we have a nice turn five play if we need to. So we get our Rock Slide for our Darkhawk. I'm feeling even better, and our last location is Danger Room. Now, we're going to talk about Danger Room in a second. Agent Coulson is definitely the play on this turn. 
uh, to go ahead and get myself some more ammunition. And if you look closely, we got ourselves Ronin and Absorbing Man. Now, this is going to be interesting because I'm looking at Electro here and maybe he's going to pop down a Sandman, in which case Ronin's even better. And this is a perfect example of Agent Coulson giving us all the tools we need to win the game. Now, on top of all that, he played Electro on top of Danger Room uh, in hopes that it would destroy it. Didn't get so lucky. And looking at our turn forehand, guys, we have a lot to decide. Uh, we have a ton of cards to play. We could do Darkhawk, Rock Slide, Absorb Man, or Ronin. Uh, Ronin is tempting, but he doesn't know that I have that. And I don't want to play Darkhawk too early either to give away our Vibranium side. So I do elect to go and play Rock Slide into Danger Room. If we lose him, we lose him. It's not a big deal because he's already doing his job to power up our Darkhawk. And if he stays, then, well, uh, we're obviously going to keep our priority, uh, which is not essential in this deck, but definitely nice. Uh, and we go on to turn five, which uh, was kind of a difficult turn. I didn't know what I wanted to exactly play here. Uh, did I want to skip and do She-Hulk? Uh, I elected to go with Devil Dinosaur just in case he had a Galactus play that he might do. Uh, I thought it was just enough power to really win me that location, and I didn't have to worry about it if I played somewhere else. Now, we're on the final turn of the game, and obviously, guys, because of my uh, deck or my hand, we definitely have to check his deck and hand size. So taking a quick look at this guy's hand and deck size, it's very important because of my hands and all the cards that can be affected by it. Uh, I was trying to think of what he might do, and I kind of... Thought it would most likely be an Odin in the middle. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and because of how big his hand is and he has Electro, a uh, Ronin was the perfect play in the middle location. And then I might as well throw the Vibranium that can't be destroyed over on Danger Room. Now, if he does throw Dr. Doom down uh, or Odin in the middle, uh, it won't matter. We can win with Ronin. And if he doesn't, if he does something else huge, it also won't matter because we can play something on the right side. Now, we did steal his Magneto from Daily, or we got a copy of it. So I thought maybe that's what he was going to do. Uh, and we have Coulson and Rock Slide, and he could pull those to the left. But again, the Ronin was going to win that middle location. And we definitely will win the left location, so nothing to worry about. There you go. He does exactly what we thought. He plays Magneto left side. Doesn't matter. The Ronin throws him off. And I think this really showcases Agent Coulson. Every time you play, it'll be a little different, which is why it's so good in battle mode and tournaments and also the latter. Uh, but the con of that is it does take a lot of games to get used to how to play this deck. It's not one that you can go out there immediately. You have to think on your feet a lot. You need to know when to play Agent Coulson cards and what combos and win conditions to go for. There's a lot of moving pieces, but hopefully this guide helped you guys out. So there it is, guys. That's everything I know about rocks and hawks. And hopefully I taught you guys how to pilot the deck as well. Have a good one. Have a great one. And until the next one, happy snapping.